bright duty every student matters hello dear students welcome to another lecture in this class we are going to begin with chapter 7 of class 12th literature reader novel and board which is the ransom of red chief now this story written by o henry is a wonderful tale of how two kidnappers who wanted to get ransom money now what is the ransom the money that the kidnappers charge in return of freeing or relieving the person they have caught hold of so two kidnappers kidnapped a young boy and they expected to earn a lot of money out of this kidnapping but this so called boy who was supposed to be a victim of this of these kidnappers they actually you know this boy turned the tables around and the boy forced the kidnappers to pay his father money at the end so rather than the kidnappers getting the money for this kidnapping the kidnappers had to give the money to the father of this young boy by the end of the day Now, how did this actually take place? What did the boy do that made the kidnappers, you know, do something like this? Is what we are going to read off. So, have you ever planned something in your life? Now, a plan is something that would solve your problems. Imagine that you plan something and everything goes kaput. Everything goes down the drain. It just goes the other way round. things don't work out the way you planned so what is going to be your reaction so just think about it and now we will read the story of these two kidnappers so it looks like a good thing but wait till i tell you we were down south in alabama bill driscoll and myself when this kidnapping idea struck us There was a town down there, a fl- as flat as a pancake, called Summit. Bill and I had about six hundred dollars. We needed two thousand dollars more for an illegal land deal in Illinois. So, the narrator tells us that this seemed to be a very good thing. But he says that wait for my entire story to finish before you reach any conclusion. So there were two people, Bill Driscoll and our narrator himself. So they were living in the south in the Alabama, and this kidnapping idea came to their mind. There was a town down there, and that town was as flat as a pancake. So the town was very flat. There were no hills, nothing. It was a very plain. area and the name of that town was summit bill and the narrator had with themselves 600 dollars and they needed 2000 dollars more because there was some illegal land deal that they wanted to do in illinois we chose for our victim the only child of an influential citizen named abenazer dorset he was a boy of 10 with red hair So whom did they decide to kidnap? They chose a man who was a very influential, a very powerful, a very rich citizen, and his name was Abenazer Dorset. And this man had a ten-year-old boy with red hair. So Bill and I thought that Abenazer would pay a ransom of two thousand dollars to get his boy back. but wait till i tell so since abenazer was a rich man and uh, you know he had just one son who was 10 years of age so the kidnappers thought that abenazer would be willing would be ready to pay them the money that they have demanded 2000 dollars to get his son but wait till i tell you so he says wait till the end of my story About two miles from Summit was a little mountain covered with the cedar trees. There was a cave on the back of the mountain, and there we stored our supplies. So, what 
spot did they choose to keep their victim there was a little mountain which was 2 miles away from that summit from that place where a benazir door settled and that mountain was covered with the cedar tree so these are the types of trees that had covered uh, that mountain now on that mountain was a little cave so inside their cave they had stored whatever supplies whatever things they would be needing in you know with the little boy whom they would kidnap one evening after sundown we drove a horse and carriage past old dorset's house the kid was in the street throwing rocks at a cat on the opposite fence so one evening after the sundown after the sun had set they drove a horse so on a horse there was a carriage which was attached to a horse and they took and they went near the dorset's house now the kid was playing in the street and he was throwing rocks at a cat which was there on the opposite side hey boy says bill would you like to have a bag of candy and a nice ride so bill who was the narrator's partner he said to the little boy that would you like to have a bag of candy and a nice ride on this carriage the boy catches bill neatly in the eye with a piece of brick what did the boy do as soon as bill asked him this he had a brick in his hand he hit bill's eye with that brick that will cost the old man an extra 500 dollars says bill climbing over the wheel so now that bill was hurt because of the boy he got very angry and he said to himself that for this you know for this brick that the little boy has hit on to me i am going to charge extra 500 dollars from his pocket now he came down the carriage the boy put up a fight like a wild animal but at last we got him down in the bottom of the carriage and drove away so that little boy of 10 actually fought with them like a wild animal but by the end they could manage to get hold of that child in the carriage and drive away we took him up to the cave leaving bill and the boy there i drove the horse and carriage back to the little village 3 miles away where we had hired it and walked back to the mount so they took the little boy to the cave our narrator left bill and the little boy in the cave and he decided to drive back the horse and the carriage back to the village from where they had rented it from where they had hired it now this village was 3 miles away so he went to that village and then he was walking up the mountain on my return i saw the boy had two large bird feathers stuck in his hair he points a stick at me and says ha pale face do you dare to enter the camp of red chief the terror of the plains so when the man when the narrator returned back to the cave he saw that this little boy rather than being afraid rather than crying or feeling scared he had two big large feathers he had attached them to the side of his head he had a stick in his hand that he pointed towards the narrator like a gun and he said to the narrator that hey pale face pale face is used for somebody who is white in color so hey pale face do you dare to enter the camp of the red chief so he called himself as the red chief the terror of the plains who everybody was afraid of in the plains so he said to the narrator that how do you dare enter my cave when i am the red chief and everybody is scared of me he is all right now says bill rolling up his trousers and examining some wounds on on his legs we are playing indian I am old Hank the trapper red chiefs the captive and I'm going to be scalped at daybreak by Jeronimo that kid can hit her so 
Suddenly, Bill came and he said, "Don't worry, he's all right now." He rolled up the trousers and he started looking at some wounds on his legs. So he had actually hurt this little boy of ten had hurt Bill on his legs, and he told the narrator that we are playing Indian. I am playing the role of old Hank. This man, this boy, is Red Chief. I am the trapper who trapped Red Chief, and Red Chief is the captive. Captive. He is the one I have got hold of. I have got hold of, and I'm going to be scalped at daybreak. So I'm going to be scalped at daybreak means that in the afternoon, some skin is going to be cut off from my body. by this kid and then he said to the narrator that he is like jeronimo and he can kick very very hard yes sir that boy seems to be having the time of his life the fun of camping out in a cave had made him forget that he was a captive himself He immediately christened me Snake Eye, the spy, and announced that when his braves returned from the war path, I was to be broiled at the stake at the rising of the sun. So yes, sir, this the narrator is telling to the readers that that boy was having time of his life. He had a wonderful time inside that cave. He was camp. Thing in a cave, and he had forgotten that he actually was a captive; that he had been kidnapped. Immediately, this little boy Christian. Christian means named our narrator to be the Snake Eye, who was a spy, and he also announced that when his braves, that when his soldiers will return from the war. He is going to be broiled at the snake. So when the sun will rise, he is going to be burnt at a stake. Stake is that place where one is hanged. Okay, so he was going to be broiled at the snake. Then we had supper, and he filled his mouth full of bacon and bread and gravy and began to talk. He made a during dinner speech something like this. So the narrator said that we had our supper, we had our dinner, our evening meal, and this little boy filled his mouth with bacon and gravy and bread, and he started talking to us. And during his dinner, he actually gave a speech to us. And what was that speech? The little boy said, "I like this fine." I never camped out before, but I had a pet possum once, and I was nine last birthday. I hate to go to school. Rats ate up sixteen of Jimmy Talbot and speckled hens' eggs, and there any real Indians in these woods? So he said that I am okay. I have never, never camped like this before. I had a pet possum once. Possum is a small pet animal which looks like a rat. He said that last birthday I turned nine. This birthday ten. I hate to go to school. Rats ate sixteen eggs of uh, Jimmy Talbot's aunt's hens. And then he asked, "Are there any real Indians in these woods? Is there anybody who's a real man in these forests?" I want some more gravy. Does the trees moving make the wind blow? We had five puppies. What makes your nose so red, Hank? My father has lots of money. Are the stars what? I whipped Ed Walker twice Saturday. I don't like girls. You dasn't catch toads unless with a string. Do oxen make any noise? Why are oranges round? Have you got to bed to sleep on it on in this cave? So these were all the things that the boy asked. He said that he wanted more gravy. He asked them the reason why the winds uh, blow and whether the moving trees uh, made the winds blow. He then told them that they he had five puppies. He asked them why their nose was red. He told them that his father had a lot of money. 
that he asked why the stars were hot. He said that he did not like girls. He told them that in order to catch the toads, the frogs, one has to catch them with a string. And then he asked them why the oranges were round. And then, have you got beds? If they had beds in this cave also where they could sleep. Amos Mure had got six toes. He said about a parrot that can talk, but a monkey and a fish cannot. How many does it take to make twelve? So these were all the things that the boy was speaking to at the time of having his meal. Every few minutes, he would remember that he was a pesky red skin and pick up his stick rifle and tiptoe to the mouth of the cave to rubber for the scouts of hated pale face. Now and then he would let out a war whoop that made old Hank, the trapper, shiver. That boy had Bill terrorized from the start. So every few minutes the boy would remember that he would be red skin, that he was the head of a red chief's army and he would take his stick and would tiptoe. Very quietly he would go to the beginning of the cave and would cover the cave hoping that an army of the white men was going to approach. Now and then he would let out a war whoop. War whoop is the sign that you let out, you know, the vocal, the audio that you make when you are asking somebody to fight with you. So he would let out a war whoop and that would make the old Hank. Old Hank means Bill was very scared of that little boy since the beginning. Red Chief says I to the boy, would you like to go home? So the narrator, who was called the Snake Eye, asked the boy if he would like to go home. Oh, what for, says he, I don't have any fun at home. I hate to go to school. I like to camp out. You won't take me back home again, will you? So the boy said, why should I go home? I don't have any fun at my place. I don't like to go to school. I like to camp here with you. Please don't take me home. Not right away, says I. We'll stay here in the cave a while. So the narrator said to the boy that don't worry. We are going to be here in the cave for some time. All right, says he, that'll be fine. I never had such fun in all my life. So this boy who was kidnapped, he was having fun and he said, I have never had such fun in my life. We went to bed about 11 o'clock. Just at daybreak, I was awakened by a series of terrible screams from Bill. They were not yells or howls or shouts or whoops or yawps such as you'd expect from a manly set of vocal organs. They were simply indecent, terrifying, humiliated screams that the women emit when they see ghosts or caterpillars. So he said that at 11 o'clock we all went to bed and just at daybreak, early in the morning, I heard a series of terrible screams. I could hear Bill screaming like hell. Now he says that what the way he was screaming, he was not yelling. Now these are all the different sounds that are made from a man's vocal organs. The kind of sounds that a man's vocal organs can emit have been listed. So he says that these were not the kind of sounds that that man Bill was speaking, rather, they were terrifying, humiliating screams. He was screaming like anything, just the way a woman screams when they see a ghost or a caterpillar. It is an awful thing to hear a strong, desperate, fat man scream incontinently in a cave at daybreak. And he says that it was a very bad feeling because Bill was not a small or a petite man. He was strong, he was fat, he was powerful. But he was screaming continuously in his cave in the morning. 
I jumped up to see what the matter was. Red Chief was sitting on Bill's chest with one hand holding Bill's hair. In the other, he had a sharp knife. He was attempting to take Bill's scalp, according to the sentence that had been pronounced upon him the evening before. Do you remember this little boy had said that at daybreak he is going to take a scalp, a piece of skin of uh, Bill's body. So this little boy was sitting on the chest of Bill. He held on Bill's hair with one of his hands and he had a knife in the other hand and he was trying to take a piece of Bill's skin. And this is the reason why Bill was screaming. I got the knife away from the boy, but from the, that moment, Bill's spirit was broken. He laid down on his side of the bed, but he never closed an eye again in sleep, as long as that boy was with us. I dozed off for a while, but along towards sun up, I remember that Red Chief has said I was to be burned at the stake at this rising of the sun. I was not nervous or afraid, but I sat up and lit my pipe and I leaned against the wall. So the narrator took away the knife from the boy's hands. But from that moment, Bill's spirit was broken means he was highly scared and afraid. He laid down on the bed, but he did not sleep for as long as that boy was with them. Our narrator slept for a while, but towards the sun up, you know, he remembered, he woke up in the morning early. Why? Because now he remembered what the Red Chief had told to the narrator. Bill, for Bill, the Red Chief had said that he's going to take a scalpel, a piece of his skin. And to the narrator, the Red Chief had announced that he's going to be burned at the stake. So the narrator remembered that although he was not nervous or afraid, but he still sat up, he lit his pipe and he leaned. He took, he sat against a rock. What you getting up so soon for, Sam? asked Bill. So Bill asked the narrator, whose name we now know is Sam. So Bill asked Sam that why did you get up so early? Me? says I. Oh, I got a kind of pain in my shoulder. I thought sitting up would rest. So he said that I had pain in my shoulders and I thought that if I'm going to get up, I'm going to get some relief. You're a liar, says Bill. You're afraid. You was to be burned at sunrise and you was afraid he would do it. And he would too if he could find a man. So Bill said that, no, you're lying. The reason why you've woken up so early is because you are scared. You knew that he was going to burn you at stake and you are afraid of it. And Bill said that he would actually have done that if he would have had a match. Unfortunately, he does not have a matchstick or else he would have surely burned you. And it awful. So this is the kind... As you can see in the picture, that little boy was sitting on Bill holding his hair with a knife in his hand. And it awful, Sam. Do you think anybody will pay out money to get a little imp like that back home? Bill asks. So Bill asks Sam that do you think his father or anybody for that matter is going to pay money to get this little imp, to get this mischievous naughty child, this troublesome child back home? Sure, says I. A rowdy kid like that is just the kind that parents do to. Now, you and the chief get up and cook breakfast while I go up on the top of this mountain and look around. So he says, yes, surely, because such rowdy, such badly behaved kids are actually the apple of the parent's eye. The parents actually dote on, the parents love such kids dearly. So he said to Bill that now you and the chief, you get up and start preparing some breakfast and I'll go on to the top of the mountain and just look around in the village. 
I went up on the peak of the little mountain over towards summit. I expected to see the men of the village searching the countryside for the missing boy, but all was peaceful. So he went on to the top of the little mountain and then he looked towards the village where he thought that the people would be looking around trying to find that little missing boy. But nothing like that could be visible. Everything was very peaceful in the village. Perhaps, says I to myself, it has not yet been discovered that the wolves have gone away the tender lambing from the fold. Heaven help the wolves and I went down the mountain to the breakfast. Now this paragraph is very ironical. I'll tell you how by the end of the story. The narrator, that is Sam, he thought to himself that probably the villagers have yet not realized that the wolves, here he calls himself and Bill, that is the kidnappers as the wolves, and the tender lambs came to the little boy, the little innocent boy who had been kidnapped by them. So he said that perhaps the villagers have yet not discovered that we, the wolves, have kidnapped that little innocent boy. May God help the wolves. So he said that even the heaven is by our side. The God is also supporting us because the villagers have not realized that that little boy has been kidnapped by us. And then he went down the mountain to have his breakfast. When I got to the cave, I found Bill backed up against the side of it. He was breathing hard with the boy threatening to strike him with a rock. So by the time the narrator came down, he saw that Bill was out of the cave. He was leaning against the wall and was breathing very heavily. And that little boy was threatening that he is going to hit him with a rock. He Put a red hot potato down my back, explains Bill, and then crushed it with his foot. I boxed his ears. Have you got a gun with you, Sam? So he told Sam that this little boy is so mischievous that he took a hot potato. He threw him down his back. You know, he put it inside his shirt. And then with his feet, he crushed that potato. And then I boxed his tears. The narrator took off the, you know, he held on fast to that little boy with his tears. Boxed his tears. We've seen our mothers holding our ears when we do something naughty. And Bill was so annoyed with the little boy that he asked Sam, do you have a gun with you? I took the rock away from the boy and ended the argument. The fight was ended. I'll fix you, says the boy to Bill. No man ever yet struck the red chief, but what he got paid for it. You better beware. What did the boy said to Bill now? He says that I'm going to fix you. I'm going to look after you. No man has ever had the courage to fight with the red chief. And since you have taken this courage, I'm going to deal with you. You better beware. You better beware of me. After breakfast, the boy takes a piece of leather with strings wrapped around it out of his pocket and goes outside the cave unwinding it. What is he up to now? Says Bill anxiously. You don't think he'll run away, do you, Sam? So after the breakfast, the boy took out a piece of leather which had strings, which had a thread around it and he went down the cave and he started unwinding it. He started just moving it around. So Bill asked Sam that what is the boy up to now? What is he planning to do? Do you think he's going to run away? Sam said no fear of it. Uh, he don't seem to be much of a home, but a home buddy. He says that this boy does not miss his home a lot. But we've got to fix up some plan about the ransom. So he said we need to do something about the money that we have to ask from his parents. Tonight we must get a message to his father demanding the $2,000 for his return. 
Then we heard a kind of war whoop such as David might have emitted when he knocked the champion Goliath. It was Red Chief holding a sling in one hand. He whirled it swiftly around his head. So Sam said to Bill that we need to send a message to this, this boy's father tonight demanding him the $2,000 for his return. And then they again heard that war whoop. This word has been used prior also. The kind of sound that the boy made when announcing a war with somebody. And when they went out, they saw that he was moving that sling in one hand around his head and he was making that noise. So my dear students, so far you have very well seen that this boy who was a victim, who was kidnapped by two strangers, almost double his age, was not in dread of anybody, but was having a life, uh, you know, a fun time. Also, Bill, this fat, big man, was afraid of this boy. So, I dodged and heard a heavy thud and a deep sigh from Bill. A rock, the size of an egg, had hit him just behind his left ear. He fell in the fire across the frying pan of hot water for washing the dishes. I pulled him out and poured cold water on his head for half an hour. So when uh, the narrator Sam heard the little boy run out of the cave and you know make the war whoop sign, initially he did not pay much attention to that sound at all. But then he dodged, you know, he ran out and he heard a heavy thud sound. A heavy thud is a sound when something very heavy falls. So that is the thud uh, sound that we talk about. So they, he heard a very heavy sound and a deep sigh. There was a huge cry he could hear from, uh, hear from Bill again. Now a rock which was the size of an egg. So a rock which was the size of an egg had hit him behind his left ear. So a rock was thrown to Bill by that little boy towards his left ear. Because of this, he fell in a fire across the frying pan of hot water for washing the dishes. So there was fire which was put out for washing the dishes. So alongside the frying pan, there was a fire. So Bill fell into that fire. The narrator had to pull him out and had to pour cold water on his head for half an hour so that he could make, feel a little better. Now, he says that I went out and caught that boy and shook him. So, the narrator was obviously very angry with the little boy now. So, he went out, he caught that boy and he shook him. Shook is the past form of shake. So he started shaking him and said that if your behavior does not improve, I will take you straight home. Now you are going to be good or not. So the narrator threatened the boy that if you don't improve, I will take you back home. Just imagine, this is a boy who has been kidnapped and the narrator is threatening him that if he does not turn out to be a good boy, then he would be sent home. To this, the little boy said, I was just funny. I was just teasing, says he sullenly, sullenly. I did not mean to hurt old Hank. But what did he hit me for? I'll behave if you don't send me home. So the little boy said that I was only having fun. And he said that in a very sullen manner, in a very bad temper. He said, I did not want to hit old Hank, that is Bill. But why did he hit me for? I hit him by mistake. Why did he hit me back? And then he said to Sam that I will behave myself if you don't send me. I thought it best to send a letter to old man Dorset that day, demanding the ransom and dictating how it should be paid. I accepted Bill's suggestion to lower the ransom amount. So, he decided that he had to write a letter to the boy's father 
demanding him about demanding the money from him and also dictating him also telling him how the money should be paid now bill had suggested to sam that they should lower their rams ransom amount just imagine they wanted 2000 dollars and uh, now they wanted to lower the amount just because they were in a hurry to get rid of this boys and these are the same men who call themselves as wolves remember i wrote irony in front of one paragraph over where i told you i'll explain you from time to time why that was ironical so sam considered himself and his partner bill to be like wolves who had kidnapped a poor lambskin but here it was exactly the other way around it was them who seemed poorer and it was the boy who seemed to have a greater charge and dominance over her so the letter that sam had written to his father read we have your boy hidden in a place far from summit we demand 1500000 for his return the money to be left at midnight tonight at the same place and in the same box as your answer as described below so sam had written that we have hidden your boy your son in a place which is far from summit your village and in order to return you your child you need to pay us 1500000 1500 now the money you are supposed to leave in the same box as an answer at midnight tonight if you agree to these terms send your answer in writing by a messenger tonight at half past 8 o'clock after crossing owl creek on the road to poplar cave there are three large trees close to the fence of the wheat field on the right hand side At the bottom of the fence post opposite the third tree will be found a small pasteboard box. The messenger will place the answer in this box and return immediately to summit. If you fail to agree to our demand, you will never see your boy again. If you pay the money as demanded, he will be returned to you safe and well within three hours. Two desperate men. So he. directed his father where the answer is to be left so he said that if you agree to the terms that i have laid in front of you then you have to send me your answer in writing through a messenger exactly at half past 8 he says that where was the answer supposed to be kept after crossing the owl creek so this is a place Sam guided that after crossing the owl creek on the road to the poplar cove there are three large trees which are close to the fence of a wheat field on the right hand side at the bottom of that fence post opposite the third tree you will find a box the messenger will place the answer in that box and will return back to submit immediately and if you fail to agree to the terms that i have laid in front of you that you will never be able to see your son again so he says that if you agree we will return you your son safe and sound within 3 hours and he signed himself as two desperate men sam says i took the letter and walked over to popular cove I then sat around the post office listening to the news. An old man there says that he hears Summit is all buried because of a Benazir Dorset's boy having been lost or stolen. That was all I wanted to know. I mailed my letter and left. The postmaster said the mail carrier would come by in an hour to take the mail on to the summit. So Sam had written that letter he took that letter and walked over to Potter Cave there he sat around the post office in order to listen to the news that the people were discussing about there was an old man who to- who talked about uh, how the entire summit was very buried as Ebenezer Dorset had either lost his boy or his boy has been stolen that is kidnapped 
Now, this is the only thing that Sam wanted to know because this was enough for him to understand that people were now aware of that little boy's kidnapping. So, he dropped his letter. The postmaster told him that the mailman, the postmaster, uh, you know, the mail carrier would come in an hour and all the letters will be taken to the summit thereafter. So, today only his letter was going to be delivered to Ebenezer Dorset. At half past eight, I was up in the third tree as well hidden as a tree toad waiting for the messenger to arrive. Exactly on time, a half-grown boy rides up the road on a bicycle. So at half past eight, Sam was hiding behind the third tree. And he was waiting like a tree toad, like a tree animal who was waiting for the messenger to come. Now, exactly on time, there was a boy who was half-grown. So, he was not a little boy, he was not a man, he was a half-grown boy who came on his bicycle. He finds the box at the foot of the fence post, puts a folded piece of paper into it and leaves riding back toward the sun. So, he did as he was guided. He found, the he found the box, he put the letter into it and then he drove back to the summit. I waited an hour and then concluded the thing was square. I slid down the tree, got the note and was back at the cave in half an hour. I opened the note and read it to Bill. So, uh, Sam waited for an hour. Obviously, he wanted to be sure that nobody would come to catch them. So he waited for an hour and when nobody turned up, he was sure that the thing was square, that it was all safe for him to climb down now. So he came down the tree, he took that note and back he was in his cave if in half an hour. Then he and Bill started reading the note, the answer that Ebenezer Dorset had written. Now what did the answer say? The answer said, gentlemen, I received your letter regarding the ransom you asked for the return of my son. I think you are a little high in your demands. I hereby make a counter proposal which I believe you will accept. You bring Johnny home and pay me $250 in cash and I agree to take him off your hands. You had better come at night because the neighbors believe he is lost and I could not be responsible for what they would do to anybody they saw bringing him back. So the letter read that gentlemen, I have received your letter in which you are demanding $1,500 from me in return of my son. I think your demand is very high. So, I want to keep a counter proposal. I want to keep a proposal in front of you as well, which I know you will accept. You bring home my son, Johnny. So, we know his name is not Red Chief and that he is Johnny. So, the father said that you bring home my son and you pay me $250 in cash and I agree to take my son away from you. You better come at night because the neighbors believe that he is lost. And so if the neighbors would see you bringing him home, I am not going to take the responsibility of what they might do to you. You know, the kidnappers can be handled in any possible manner. So he said, I will not be responsible for that. So the father knew very well how his son was. And so he said to the kidnappers that I will not pay you anything. Rather, you will have to pay me $250 if you want my son to be taken away from me. It read very respectfully, Ebenezer Dorset. Great pirates of Penzance, says I, of all the nerve. So, great pirates of Penzance, he said that we are the biggest kidnappers of all times. Of all the nerve. So, of all the nerve means Sam got very angry when he read what the father had written. This clearly shows that the father was not afraid of them. He was not scared of them at all. But then Sam looked at Bill and stopped. 
he had the most appealing look in his eyes i ever saw on the face of a dump or a talking dude so the way bill was looking at sam the appealing the request with which bill was looking at sam actually resembled a dumb or a talking animal a small animal he was looking at sam with uh, you know a lot of request in his eyes obviously sam says he what's 250 dollars after all we got the money one more night with this boy will drive me crazy i think mr dorset is making us a good offer you are not going to let the chance go are you so bill said to sam that sam 250 dollars do not matter we have the money but if this boy stays with us for one more night he's surely going to draw me crazy i am going to get mad so i think mr dorset has actually laid a very good offer in front of us so please think about it and don't let this chance go tell you the truth bill says i this little lamb has got on my nerves too we'll take him home pay the ransom and make our get away so he says that you know to tell you the truth bill this little lamb now the same lamb who had been afraid of the wolves initially had now got on their nerves had become a big trouble for them So even Sam decided that they would take him home, would pay his father the money, and then peacefully get away from there. We took him home that night. We got him to go by telling him that his father had bought him a gun, and we were going to hunt bears the next day. So they took him home. But you all know it would not have been an easy task for them to convince the child to go back home. So what did they tell the child? They told the child that your father has brought for you a real gun, and we will bring that gun so that we can go to hunt bears the next day. It was just twelve o'clock when we knocked at Benazir's front door. Bill counted out two hundred and fifty dollar into Dorset's hand. So at twelve, they reached the house. Bill counted the money and put it in a Benazir Dorset's house. When the kid learned we were planning to leave him at home, he started to howl and clung tightly to Bill's leg. His father pulled him away slowly. So when the child realized that actually he was going to be left inside the house now, he started howling. He started crying, and very tightly he hung on to Bill's leg. His father pulled the child away slowly. Bill asked him, "How long can you hold him?" "I am not as strong as I used to be," says Old Dorset, "but I think I can promise you ten minutes." So when the father had taken that child away, Bill asked him that, "How long would you be able to hold him?" And the father said that, "I am not that strong, but I think for ten minutes I'll be able to hold my child." Enough says Bill. In ten minutes, I shall cross the central, southern, and western uh, the states and be running for the Canadian border. So Bill said that ten minutes is enough for me. In ten minutes, I will cross the central, southern, and the middle western states also, and I'm going to run for the Canadian border. This simply means that Bill was in such great hurry to get rid of the child that, despite being a fat man, he knew he was going to run very fast. And as dark as it was, and as fast as as fat as Bill was, and as good a runner as I am, he was a good mile and a half out of Summit before I could catch up with him. and just imagine this man who was very fat he ran so fast that the uh, the narrator who was a good runner it actually took him a lot of time to catch up with bill you know our narrator was one and a half mile behind bill because bill was in such great hurry to get rid of that little boy the wretch 
So with this, my dear students, we come to the end of this chapter. And as I told you at the beginning, this chapter is surely going to turn out to be very ironical. The story began with two kidnappers, Sam and Bill, who were sure to get $200 as a ransom money after they would kidnap a boy of 10. This boy was the son of Ebenezer Dorset, who was a very rich and influential man in Summit, which is the name of the place. So these kidnappers had made a plan. They brought uh, this little boy to a cave that was on a mountain behind, you know, far away from the summit. This boy turned out to be a great nuisance for them, especially for Bill. Because at the beginning, he first hit Bill on his eye with a brick. And then when they were inside the cave, he actually sat on the chest of Bill and was trying to scrape off his skin. He was trying to cut his skin using a knife. Then we also read how he threw an excise rock to the left side of Bill. And because of that, Bill actually fell into fire and burnt his head. It was then when Sam decided that they had to ask his father to give them the ransom money and he wrote a letter. Going by the kind of nuisance and the desperation that they had to get rid of this boy, they lowered their ransom amount to $1,500. They wrote a letter to their father demanding their money and Sam went to the post office to drop the letter. They got an answer from that boy's father telling them that if they wanted to get rid of that child, they need to pay the father $250. The two men, the two kidnappers, accepted that offer and rather than taking anything from the father, they paid the father $250 and leaving the child, they ran as fast as they could so that the child would not fall. So with this, my dear students, we come to the end of this story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did teaching you. So now let us move on to the back exercises.